Hey gamers, it's Pamela Horton, your gamer next door here at the biggest esports event in the world. The season three world championships for League of Legends pitting SK Telecom against Royal Club. Why don't we go inside and see who's got what it takes. I am joined by Nick Allen, who is an esports manager, and he is the tournament director for the World Championships. How do you feel about the government officially recognizing esports athletes as actual athletes? It's awesome. I, I told my mom right away, <laughs> and I was like, I told you it's not a waste of time. Um, I, I just think it adds a lot of legitimacy to our league and recognition that when you play a computer game, which is something that people consider very like uh, anti-social, nerdy, not, yeah, exactly, that like you are a professional athlete. And, it, and, and if you don't believe that, ask the US government. It, it creates an awesome ambition for, for gamers who no longer, like back in the 80s and 90s, yeah. like when you played video games, when you were a nerd, when you were a dork, that was bad. Yeah. But now I kind of feel like it's a ruling force. The nerds are coming together. Yeah. We, we will dominate this world. <laughs> Sports will become ours. <laughs> Did you tell me who you're cosplaying as today? Um, I'm Officer Caitlin. I'm Kenan. Why did you choose Officer Caitlin? Um, well, Caitlin is one of my favorite champions in the game. Um, granted, I'm not really good at AD carrying, but she's still like a pretty awesome character. I love her so much. So, why did you choose to crossplay Kenan? Um, I really enjoy Kenan. I like to play him AP mid, and he's also actually fun to play mid or bot as AD carry, which is not as good as. Caitlyn, but he's so really fun to play. I actually main Caitlyn, so that's why I love her costume so much. Hey guys, I'm here with Snoopy. He is a renowned professional gamer in the League of Legends community, and I wanted to ask you, how long would you say you've been involved with the League of Legends community? I would say I've been involved now with the League community for about three years in total now. Now, having been a professional gamer for a little bit, did you see yourself at, at any younger age going, I'm going to be a professional gamer when I grow up. No, no way. <laughs> no one ever, like, no one ever grows up. Maybe now that we're, like, in the limelight, that people can grow up and think that. But before, no. I didn't, never, never thought in a million years I'd be traveling the world playing video games and getting paid well to do it. I know you've been giving a lot of commentary during the semifinals, um, and you get asked a lot, you know, how do you think that teams are going to play? Overall, who, who are you feeling? Royal Club or SKT? So, I mean, everyone like loves Faker, and everyone's like, "Oh my God, it's Korea! Korea's gonna dominate!" But I have like a soft spot in my heart for uh, Royal. I think it's gonna be a really, really close series. I'm gonna call three-two uh, at the end of it, but I'm hoping Royal takes over SKT. All right, guys, this is where this tense moment comes down to the wire between SK Telecom and Royal Club. As you can tell, Riot has cut no corners when it comes to making sure that the Season 3 World Championships are the very best that they could be. They have a wonderful lineup of live performers, and we'll have to see how this evening ends with SK Telecom or Royal Club taking home the Summoner's Cup. They've entered into the fight. Royals Hellfars are just getting demolished. Uzi on the outside trying to do what he can, but it's not going to be enough. Uzi's chased into the base, and SKT wipes him for the ace. The Quadra, the big one. Oh. Oh. Well guys, it was an absolutely amazing game. SK Telecom brought their A game, and that is why they are taking home the reigning title of the Season 3 World Champions. Make sure you hit me up on Twitter at GamerNextDoor. Until next time, I am Pamela Horton, Game On.